back out, but she didn't bite the leg yet. So let's see her. Oh! Welcome to the jungle, everybody. Dr. Lance Jeffrey here, PhD. PhD? Yes. Pretty huge. <laughs> Wait, oh, you gave me wrong. Uh, pretty huge diaphragm. That's the only PhD I've got. Okay, so today we are going to be conducting an experiment. So what we're going to do is we are going to stand on a puff adder for science. What do I mean by that? We are literally going to be putting a foot onto a puff adder and seeing how many times it strikes. Because what everyone always believes is that puff adders are fat, lazy snakes. They don't move away. They wait there for you like a landmine. As you stand on it, bam. So let's see. What I've done is obviously I'm not going to be putting my own foot on it. We have a fake leg. It's my third leg. No. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to be doing is, obviously I'm going to try and make this as natural as possible. So I'll be standing with my left leg and where the snake would be for my next step, I'm going to be doing that. Okay, I'm going to make sure that this stays up and I'm going to be pushing down onto the snake. Obviously I'm not going to be hurting the snake. I know some people maybe say that it's not that accurate because you're going to be standing a lot harder. I don't think so. But we're going to see if we can get these animals to strike. What we're also going to do is we're going to try and time it as how far two people would be walking if they were going on a hiking trail and then see how many people have to stand on the snake before it bites them. We're going to try a whole bunch of different things. So let's get straight into it. So what we'll be doing today is we're going to be using four different snakes. I've got this adult male, I've got another adult female over there, and then I've got two younger ones. So we're going to try it on a whole range of different snakes. The two younger ones are 100% wild. So we're going to be releasing them again soon. But before we release them, we're going to do this test. So you can't say that I've trained the snake, even though it's impossible to train the snake. You can't say that I've made them used to anything like that. These are wild snakes that we're going to try it with. Also, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to leave the snake for five minutes so that they can find a place that they can use their cryptic coloration. Because I firmly believe that that cryptic coloration is their first line of defense. It's only when you keep pestering that you're going to get the bite. So we're going to leave him for about five minutes, let him go on his way, and then we're going to do the test. Five minutes later. It's He's in the bushes over here. Come see if you can see him. Have a look at how effective this kind of patterning on a snake is. Even though he's a black and yellow snake, he's in a bunch of green. If we hadn't have shown you that snake, you'd have really battled to have seen him. I think you might be battling to see him as it is now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to walk as it just, I'm one guy walking through the bush herding my cattle, okay? So Bex, you can get in nice position, nice and close. And let's see, because maybe we're going to get this massive quarter of a second puff at a strike. Okay, front leg, next leg. Um, having a look around. Carry on. Next foot, next foot. Okay, no bite, no hiss. I haven't heard anything. So let's try it as if there were a couple people that were walking on a hiking trail or something like that. We've stood on them as if it was just one person. I still had a look around, checked where my cows were. No bite, no hiss, okay? So now what we're going to do is we've timed it out and we reckon around three seconds per person is a decent enough of a gap, eh? Leave enough time for breaking. So we're going to wait three seconds, stand on the snake. Wait another three seconds, stand on the snake and see how many different people will have to stand on this snake to get it to bite. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, ready? Okay, so first person comes along. Boom, stands on the snake, next person. Three seconds, boom, still no hissing. Three seconds, boom, again, still no hissing. Is the snake even there? He is. Okay, this person was a little bit further behind. Another one. Another one, still no hiss, still no hiss, still no bite. Still no nothing. He is only trying to hide away there. Okay? Now you guys are going to say, I trained the snake. So let's switch it up and go to the next snake. Okay, guys. So now we have the second snake. This is a big female puff adder. We're going to do the same thing. Let her into this thicker grass. Give her five minutes. Back off from her. Just keep an eye on her. Wait till she has found a place that she feels she's nice and camouflaged away. We're going to see if we get the same results as what we did with the male. Maybe girls are a little bit more bare bitey left there for five minutes she's not as hidden away as what the male was but she seems to think she's in a good spot have a look down at her you guys can i'm sure you guys can all see her this time so not as good of a hiding place as what the male had so let's see if she's a little bit more defensive a little bit more bitey maybe we'll get a hiss out of her this time i still don't feel like we're going to get a bite there. what do you think Vix? i don't think so i don't reckon okay let's go all right one two three okay I almost stood on the snake's head there Let's have another one where we stand next to the snake. Okay, still nothing. 
on the tail, still on that thing, not even hissing, no reaction from that snake. She's staying exactly where she is. She's not even flinching, okay? So we're going to go on to the next test, which is like Hark is walking through. So we're going to go back to that same three seconds stand, three seconds stand. Now I've already done what about five, six steps on an IBEX. So I mean, me as a human being, you stand at me six times, we, we got problems with you. But snake, still don't want to bite. Okay, so let's go back down to and let's do our hiking test. Okay, so here we come. First person, always be the first guy. Stand on their head, no problem. Okay, next one coming. Right. Three seconds, go. That was right in front. Okay, next one's coming. On the tail. Oh no, still no bite. No hiss, no nothing. Next one's coming. Mid body, no problem. And the final one. Okay, still, you guys can go in there, come in close, no hiss, no, like, she's not even breathing heavily at this point, okay, so when the snake is hidden, like I thought my theory was correct, when they're using that cryptic coloration, that they know, if they hiss or if they bite, that's like saying, hey, here I am, so as long as they can stay hidden, you can't fight what you can't see, bro, so that's what they're trying to do, okay, so we've moved out of the bushes now, she's a little bit irritated with us, well, I had her on the hook stick, she struck out once or twice, so I think we're going to definitely get a more aggressive behavior out of her, same as what we did with the male. So she's over there, she's kind of chilling already, we're going to give her another minute or two, and then we're going to try again. I think this one might, we might get a little bit of venom in this, in this fake leg of mine, my third leg, you know. Alright, you ready Becca? Let's go in there close. Okay guys, so here we come, she's in the open, I'm walking along. I'm walking along, boom, no bite in front of her. Okay, so now she knows we're here. Let's give it some time. I'm going to come from a different angle. Okay, here we come. Step, step, still no bite. She's trying to get away. Okay, maybe she's proving me wrong here. How about if we stand on the neck? Okay, that was a strike out, but she didn't bite the leg yet. So let's see her. Oh! Oh, did you hear that? I think Freddy One Leg is going to lose a couple of toes from that one. That was a proper bite. Okay, so... Out of how many times that we've stepped on the, both snakes now, that one is the only one I'm confident would have been a proper butt. I don't see any venom on it. It might be in the plastic bags and inside the shoe. But um, you, you, you're you going to be worried after that one. That's so, that's pretty good averages for a so far. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the smaller snakes. We've tried the two big snakes. We've seen pretty good results, if I'm honest. If you mess with a snake, you get bitten. If you leave them in the bush, you don't mess with them. Very hard to get bitten. We're going to try the smaller ones. However, I'm not going to be putting the smaller ones in that same thick bush that we put these big snakes in. Um, although, why not? If we release them here, we release them here. I don't think the farmers around me will be too happy, but oh well. Okay, let's go to the next smaller ones. All right, so we're going to move on to the smaller snakes now. Put them in the bush. Let's have a look. Because when you're smaller, it's a little bit easier for things to eat you. Both of these puff adders that we used before, massive snakes. So we're going to go for a smaller snake, we're going to put him in a place where there's lots of leaf litter and stuff and you can try and hide away and we're going to give him some time and we're going to see if we get a different reaction out of a smaller snake rather than the adults. Okay, so small snake, first step, here we go, we're going to go mid body, oh, opened his mouth, <laughs> that was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Alright, so he opened his mouth, he moved away, he didn't strike it. Okay, we're going to come again, onto the back leg here, let's try and stand closer to the head. No striking out whatsoever. Okay, look at him just trying to get away. And this is what we see with all the snakes all the time. They do not want to bite you. Okay, he didn't have a great hiding spot. That first one, he opened his mouth, he got a bit of a prop, but he still didn't strike out. And I hope this is showing you guys a little bit more about the behavior of these animals. They're not out there to kill us. Like, whoever told you that is a liar. Okay, so we're going to try again, move the snake to a little bit more of an open area back down there, and let's see if we get a different strike out of the animal. Okay, so we've done just a normal step. Guy herding his cattle, no bite. Now let's do our uh, hacking test of three seconds between each step. We're going to do a total of six steps. Bex, please count it because I kind of get lost in it. Okay, let's go. Okay, first person's coming. One, two, three, step. Okay, give it a couple seconds. The snake has moved. Step again. All right, still nothing. And step again. Still nothing. Okay, final step. No. I'm done, I'm done, still standing on the snake, nope, nothing, okay, one more step, still nothing, all right, okay, so now, really open area, the snake is already in S shape, he knows that he's out in the open, so maybe we get a little bit more of a strike from here, okay, first step, this is just the guy herding, here we come, left leg, right leg, 
No bite. Okay. Let's try again. Let's stand a little bit closer to the face this time. Let's just miss his face and stand here. Okay. Snake has moved. Still no bite. Okay. This step, I think this is the one that's going to get a bite. Let's go. Still no bite. Okay. Again, wide out in the open. A small snake like this, I think he's a little bit less confident in defending himself because obviously he's a much smaller animal. Whereas the bigger ones, they're willing to stand there and hold their place. But as you can see with this little snake, just trying to walk away. All right, guys. So there we have conclusion of our test. So what we saw, exactly what I thought we were going to see. When the snake is in his natural environment, and I mean, we only gave these snakes five minutes to hide away. So it's not a really long time. If you think about yourself in a natural situation or in the bush when you're walking, that snake's going to have been sitting there for a long time. Okay. If he sees you, like what we saw with most of them, they're going to move off. But if you knew how many puff headers you stood on, you wouldn't be afraid of them. I hope you guys enjoyed all of that. Make sure to click that red button, whichever side it is for you. Make sure to subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.